chapters 9 through 12 of the Gospel according to Mark. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Gospel according to Mark, from the New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 9 through 12. Chapter 9. He went on to say, in solemn truth i tell you that some of those who are standing here will certainly not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of god already come in power six days later jesus took with him peter james and john and brought them alone apart from the rest up a high mountain and in their presence his appearance underwent a change his garments also became dazzling with brilliant whiteness such whiteness as no bleaching on earth could give Moreover, there appeared to them Elijah, accompanied by Moses, and the two were conversing with Jesus. When Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, we are thankful to you that we are here. Let us put up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he knew not what to say. They were filled with such awe. Then there came a cloud spreading over them, and a voice issued from the cloud. This is my son, dearly loved listen to him instantly they looked round and now they could no longer see anyone but themselves and jesus as they were coming down from the mountain he very strictly forbade them to tell anyone what they had seen until after the son of man has risen from among the dead so they kept the matter to themselves although frequently asking one another what was meant by the rising from the dead they also asked him how is it that the scribes say that Elijah must first come? Elijah, he replied, does indeed come first and reforms everything. But how is it that it is written of the Son of Man that he will endure much suffering and be held in contempt? Yet I tell you that not only has Elijah come, but they have also done to him whatever they chose, as the scriptures say about him. As they came to rejoin the disciples, they saw an immense crowd surrounding them, and a party of scribes disputing with them. Immediately the whole multitude, on beholding him, were astonished and awestruck, and yet they ran forward and greeted him. "'What is the subject you are discussing?' he asked them. "'Rabbi,' answered one of the crowd, "'I have brought you my son. He has a dumb spirit in him, and wherever it comes upon him, it dashes him to the ground, and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth, and he is pining away.' I begged your disciples to expel it, but they had not the power. <sighs> oh, unbelieving generation, replied Jesus, how long must I be with you? How long must I have patience with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him to Jesus, and the spirit, when he saw Jesus, immediately threw the youth into convulsions, so that he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Then Jesus asked the father, how long has he been like this? From early childhood, he said. And often it has thrown him into the fire or into pools of water to destroy him. But if you possibly can, have pity on us and help us. If I possibly can, replied Jesus, why, everything is possible to him who believes. Immediately the father cried out, I do believe. Strengthen my weak faith. Then Jesus seeing that an increasing crowd was running towards him, rebuked the foul spirit and said to it, Dumb and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter into him again. So with a loud cry he threw the boy into fit after fit and came out. The boy looked as if he were dead, so that most of them said he was dead. But Jesus took his hand and raised him up, and he stood on his feet. After the return of Jesus to the house, his disciples asked him privately, how is it that we could not expel the spirit? An evil spirit of this kind, he answered, can only be driven out by prayer. Departing thence, they passed through Galilee, and he was unwilling that any one should know it, for he was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will put him to death. And after being put to death, in three days he will rise to life again. They, however, did not understand what he meant, and were afraid to question him. So they came to Capernaum, and when in the house he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? 
but they remained silent for on the way they had debated with one another who was the chief of them then sitting down he called the twelve and said to them if any one wishes to be first he must be last of all and servant of all and taking a young child he made him stand in their midst and threw his arms round him and said whoever for my sake receives one such young child as this receives me and whoever receives me receives not so much me as him who sent me rabbi said john to him we saw a man making use of your name to expel demons and we tried to hinder him on the ground that he did not follow us you should not have tried to hinder him replied jesus for there is no one who will use my name to perform a miracle and be able the next minute to speak evil of me he who is not against us is for us and whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to christ i solemnly tell you that he will certainly not lose his reward and whoever shall occasion the fall of one of these little ones who believe he would be better off if with a millstone round his neck he were lying at the bottom of the sea if your hand should cause you to sin cut it off it would be better for you to enter into life maimed than remain in possession of both your hands and go away into gehenna into the fire which cannot be put out or if your foot should cause you to sin cut it off it would be better for you to enter into life crippled than remain in possession of both your feet and be thrown into gehenna or if your eye should cause you to sin tear it out it would be better for you to enter into the kingdom of god half blind than remain in possession of two eyes and be thrown into gehenna where their worm does not die and the fire does not go out every one however will be salted with fire salt is a good thing but if the salt should become tasteless what will you use to give it saltness have salt within you and live at peace with one another chapter ten soon on his feet once more he enters the district of judea and crosses the jordan again the people flock to him and ere long as was usual with him he was teaching them once more presently a party of pharisees came to him with a question seeking to entrap him may a man divorce his wife what rule did moses lay down for you he answered moses they answered permitted a man to draw up a written notice of divorce and to send his wife away it was in consideration of your stubborn hearts said jesus that moses enacted this law for you but from the beginning of the creation the rule was male and female did god make them for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cling to his wife and the two shall be one so that they are two no longer but one what therefore god has joined together let not man separate indoors the disciples began questioning jesus again on the same subject he replied whoever divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against the first wife and if a woman puts away her husband and marries another man she commits adultery one day people were bringing young children to jesus for him to touch them but the disciples interfered jesus however on seeing this was moved to indignation and said to them let the little children come to me do not hinder them for to those who are childlike the kingdom of god belongs in solemn truth i tell you that no one who does not receive the kingdom of god like a little child will by any possibility enter it then he took them in his arms and blessed them lovingly one by one laying his hands upon them as he went out to resume his journey there came a man running up to him who knelt at his feet and asked good rabbi what am i to do in order to inherit the life of the ages why do you call me good asked jesus in reply there is no one truly good except one that is god you know the commandments do not murder do not commit adultery do not steal do not lie in giving evidence do not defraud honor thy father and thy mother rabbi he replied all these commandments i have carefully obeyed from my youth then jesus looked at him and loved him and said one thing is lacking in you go sell all you possess and give the proceeds to the poor and you shall have riches in heaven and come and be a follower of mine at these words his brow darkened and he went away sad for he was possessed of great wealth then looking round on his disciples 
Jesus said, With how hard a struggle will the possessors of riches enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words. Jesus, however, said again, Children, how hard a struggle is it for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were astonished beyond measure and said to one another, Who then can be saved? Jesus, looking on them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for everything is possible with God. Remember, said Peter to him, that we forsook everything and have become your followers. In solemn truth I tell you, replied Jesus, that there is no one who has forsaken house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the good news, but will receive a hundred times as much now in this present life, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, lands, and persecution with them, and in the coming age, the life of the ages. But many who are now first will be last, and the last first. They were still on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were full of wonder, and some, though they followed, did so with fear. Then, once more calling to him the twelve, he began to tell them what was about to happen to him. See, he said, we are going up to Jerusalem, where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the high priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will insult him in cruel sport, spit on him, scourge him, and put him to death. But on the third day, he will rise to life again. Then James and John, the sons of Zabdi, came up to him and said, Rabbi, we wish you would grant us whatever request we make of you. What would you have me do for you? he asked. Allow us, they replied, to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left hand in your glory. You know not, said he, what you are asking. Are you able to drink out of the cup from which I am to drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am to be baptized? We are able, they replied. Out of the cup, said Jesus, from which I am to drink, you shall drink, and with the baptism with which I am to be baptized, you shall be baptized. But as to sitting at my right hand or at my left, that is not mine to give. It will be for those for whom it is reserved. The other ten, hearing of it, were at first highly indignant with James and John. Jesus, however, called them to him and said to them, you are aware how those who are deemed rulers among the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men make them feel their authority. But it is not to be so among you. No, whoever desires to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever desires to be first among you must be the bond servant of all. For the Son of Man also did not come to be waited upon, but to wait on others, and to give his life as the redemption price for a multitude of people. They came to Jericho, and as he was leaving that town, himself and his disciples, and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the wayside. Hearing that it was Jesus the Nazarene, he began to cry out, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me! Many angrily told him to leave off shouting, but he only cried out all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me! Then Jesus stood still. Call him, he said. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Rise, he is calling you. The man flung away his outer garment, sprang to his feet, and came to Jesus. What shall I do for you? said Jesus. Rabboni, replied the blind man. Let me recover my sight. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has cured you. Instantly he regained his sight and followed him along the road. Chapter 11 When they were getting near Jerusalem and had arrived at Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples on in front with these instructions. Go, he said, to the village facing you, and immediately on entering it you will find an ass's foal tied up which no one has ever yet ridden. Untie him and bring him here. And if anyone asks you, why are you doing that? Say, the master needs it, and will send it back here without delay. 
So they went and found a young ass tied up at the front door of a house. They were untying it, when some of the bystanders called out, What are you doing, untying the foal? But on their giving the answer that Jesus had bidden them give, they let them take it. So they brought the foal to Jesus, and threw their outer garments over him, and Jesus mounted. Then many spread their outer garments to carpet the road, and others leafy branches which they had cut down in the fields, while those who led the way and those who followed kept shouting, God save him! Blessed be he who comes in the Lord's name! Blessings on the coming kingdom of our forefather David! God in the highest heavens save him! So he came into Jerusalem and into the temple, and after looking round upon everything there, the hour being now late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, after they had left Bethany, he was hungry. But in the distance he saw a fig tree in full leaf, and went to see whether perhaps he could find some figs on it. When, however, he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not fig time. And he said to the tree, Let no one ever again eat fruit from thee. And his disciples heard this. They reached Jerusalem, and entering the temple he began to drive out the buyers and sellers, and upset the money-changers' tables and the stools of the pigeon-dealers, and would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he remonstrated with them. Is it not written, he said, My house shall be called the house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it what it now is, a robber's cave. This the high priests and scribes heard, and they began to devise means to destroy him, for they were afraid of him because of the deep impression produced on all the people by his teaching. When evening came on, Jesus and his disciples used to leave the city. In the early morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered to the roots, and Peter, recollecting, said to him, Look, Rabbi, the fig tree which you cursed is withered up. Jesus said to them, Have faith in God. In solemn truth I tell you, that if any one shall say to this mountain, Remove, and hurl thyself into the sea, and has no doubt about it in his heart, but steadfastly believes that what he says will happen, it shall be granted him. That is why I tell you, as to whatever you pray and make request for, if you believe that you have received it, it shall be yours. But whenever you stand praying, if you have a grievance against anyone, forgive it, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your offenses. They came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the high priests, scribes, and elders came to him and asked, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you authority to do them? And I will put a question to you, replied Jesus. Answer me, and then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. John's baptism. Was it of heavenly or of human origin? Answer me. So they debated the matter with one another. Suppose we say, Heavenly, they argued. He will ask, Why then did you not believe him? Or should we say, Human? They were afraid of the people, for all agreed in holding John to have been really a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. Nor do I tell you, said Jesus, by what authority I do these things. Chapter 12 Then he began to speak to them in figurative language. There was once a man, he said, who planted a vineyard, fenced it round, dug a pit for the wine tank, and built a strong lodge. Then he let the place to vine dressers and went abroad. At vintage time he sent one of his servants to receive from the vine dressers a share of the grapes. But they seized him, beat him cruelly, and sent him away empty handed. Again he sent to them another servant, and as for him, they wounded him in the head and treated him shamefully. Yet a third he sent, and him they killed. And he sent many besides, and them also they ill-treated, beating some and killing others. He had still one left whom he could send, a dearly loved son. Him last of all he sent, saying, They will treat my son with respect. But those men the vine dressers, said to one another, Here is the heir, come, let us kill him, and then the property will one day be ours. So they took him and killed him, and flung his body outside the vineyard. What, therefore, will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and put the vine dressers to death, they said, and will give the vineyard to others. Have you not read even this passage? he added. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This cornerstone came from the Lord, 
and is wonderful in our esteem? And they kept looking out for an opportunity to seize him, but were afraid of the people, for they saw that in this parable he had referred to them. So they left him and went away. Their next step was to send to him some of the Pharisees and of Herod's partisans to entrap him in conversation. So they came to him. Rabbi, they said, we know that you are a truthful man, and you do not fear anyone, for you do not recognize human distinctions, but teach God's way truly. Is it allowable to pay poll tax to Caesar or not? Shall we pay, or shall we refuse to pay? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, replied, Why try to ensnare me? Bring me a shilling for me to look at. They brought one, and he asked them, Whose is this likeness and this inscription? Caesar's, they replied. What is Caesar's, replied Jesus, pay to Caesar, and what is God's, pay to God. And they wondered exceedingly at him. Then came to him a party of Sadducees, a sect which denies that there is any resurrection, and they proceeded to question him. Rabbi, they said, Moses made it a law for us. If a man's brother should die and leave a wife but no child, the man shall marry the widow and raise up a family for his brother. There were once seven brothers, the eldest of whom married a wife, but at his death left no family. The second married her and died, leaving no family, and the third did the same, and so did the rest of the seven, all dying childless. Finally the woman also died. At the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For they all seven married her. Is not this the cause of your error, replied Jesus, your ignorance alike of the scriptures and of the power of God? For when they have risen from among the dead, men do not marry, and women are not given in marriage, but they are as angels are in heaven. But as to the dead, that they rise to life, have you never read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of dead, but of living men. You are in grave error. Then one of the scribes, who had heard them disputing, and well knew that Jesus had given them an answer to the point, and a forcible one, came forward and asked him, Which is the chief of all the commandments? The chief commandment, replied Jesus, is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, thy whole soul, thy whole mind, and thy whole strength. The second is this, Thou shalt love thy fellow man as thou lovest thyself. Other commandment greater than these, there is none. So the scribe said to him, Rightly and very truth, Rabbi, have you said that he stands alone, and there is none but he, and to love him with all one's heart, with all one's understanding, and with all one's strength, and to love one's fellow man no less than oneself, is far better than all our whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Perceiving that the scribe had answered wisely, Jesus said to him, <laughs> You are not far from the kingdom of God. No one from that time forward ventured to put any question to him. But while teaching in the temple, Jesus asked, How is it the scribes say that the Christ is a son of David? David himself said, taught by the Holy Spirit, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I have made thy foes a footstool under thy feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? And the mass of people found pleasure in listening to Jesus. Moreover, in the course of his teaching, he said, Be on your guard against the scribes, who like to walk about in long robes, and to be bowed to in places of public resort, and to occupy the best seats in the synagogues and at dinner parties, and who swallow up the property of widows and then mask their wickedness by making long prayers. These men will receive far heavier punishment. Having taken a seat opposite the treasury, he observed how the people were dropping money into the treasury, and that many of the wealthy threw in large sums. But there came one poor widow and dropped in two farthings, equal in value to a halfpenny. So he called his disciples to him and said, in solemn truth I tell you that this widow, poor as she is, has thrown in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed out of what they could well spare, but she out of her need has thrown in all she possessed, all she had to live on. 
The end of chapters 9 through 12 of the Gospel according to Mark from the New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Recording by Mark Penfold.